Hello everyone and welcome to another day of Valorant Challengers North America presented by Senny and Zippo. Yesterday we had two very exciting and close matches, a little bit of an upset happening there when it came to the predictions. But today is a new day, is day two of week three and that means things can also be upsets and surprises. But first of all, let's introduce the desk. I'm your host Dryad and today I'm joined by Lemon Kiwi and Vensili who are going to be casting and, and taking us through the action today and Lemon... The first thing I want to say is, first of all, I love having you here. I always love having you here. But second of all, we have some very interesting matches in M80 team that is looking good that we're going to see later today. I went through up that started getting some wins. We don't know where they're going to take us. And, and we really don't know what's going to happen. We go on camera and Vansily can't be normal for like five seconds. He, God, just, please give me the schedule. <laughs> God, what, what a jump scare. I think this, we, we have TSM Winthrop first. I think that's going to be the most exciting one of the day. It is. It is going to be a, a, a very... M every, okay, first of all, M80. Every time you see them, you know it's going to be great, even if it's a kind of one-sided deal you love seeing teams being good right and vans uh i know we're kind of going backwards here but we've talking about the matches that we had yesterday mm -hmm. talking about winter up today you, you have some opinions it's a winter up against tsm both of them are one one and and things are, are can get very interesting because they both need that second win well first off i i i'm a little bit insulted that you said lemon kiwi i love having you on the desk and stuff like that too and then there's and then it's just me and then there's just nothing and then i i I refuse to work like this. I refuse to work like this. I'm 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 butt hurt right now. Uh but two L's and Vansilly. Exactly. Do you know what? There is yes, there is two L's and Vansilly. But then also, <laughs> that's a nice little pun. And then the other nice pun was that Dan Dry talked about Winthrop getting wins. So that Dan Dry, you're actually getting old like me now. So this is actually pretty cool. Uh but to get back to what, what? we were talking about, why I predict like I I, I know it's kind of crazy that I'm predicting for Winthrop to win, but technically it's not that crazy. Uh, just think about it. There's there's some reasoning behind why I think Winthrop should be winning this series against TSM, but we'll get to that when we have a chance. Let him cook in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to see what's going to go down because both of the teams, uh, like you said, Honestly, they both do have a chance. The thing is that TSM, when it comes to the, to the name, the expectations, the names as well that are known in tier two, people have mm -hmm. higher expectations for this TSM team. And, and they are names that we've known since last year. A proto we saw playing for Moe's, Moe's a GMD as well, playing very consistently at a very good level last year. And I think that that is the case for every single one, even at the TSM members for last year, Lemon. So it's, it's a battle, not so much of who is is the the better team that has proven this season but the players that people know and both these teams came off of their first win last week so things can only get better <laughs> from here and especially again for tsm 2-0 off of glazers very close maps but a proto was definitely something i'm looking forward to seeing more uh, i know the desk talked about how he's one of the most slept on sentinel players he's so good he's so consistent denies yes. entries against really aggressive duelists and tsm came out with so many first kills especially on breeze against glazers last Last week like 17 first kills they really know how to start around on a good foot yeah and that's the thing right a proto uh, at first when he was like still grinding his tier two scene and making a, na a name for himself going into like playing with the brockinator and mxs in the past as well or just moist sorry in the past before this merger came through he was also playing a lot of like viper roles and then you're like oh man we can't really see like a proto shine to what he's able to do and then now we finally see him a little bit more on you know sentinel roll on the cypher roll depending on the maps and he's definitely putting up a good point on that um but yeah I, I i i do agree you have some good tenure under this tsm roster where again just the name of the org in itself is already going to give you a heads up as in like you're a favorite to win yeah. usually when you're playing against teams and it's cool that TSM lost all four of their pistols in that series and still, and still yeah. managed to win yeah. and come back. So, you know, the mental composure is there. <laughs> they know how to recover against the Glazers. So even if it's on a bad foot, they know how to get back on the good foot. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it's so crazy that we've seen, I believe, now three matches where the winning team doesn't win any pistol, Correct. which is it's it's honestly wild we we saw it happen in masters it was the, the sentinels gen g they did lose the match and then you see these kind of 
challengers teams that continue to prove that anybody can win even when the odds are against you when you're losing those pistols round after round and and you sometimes even lose the bonus like things are sometimes just not looking good at all <laughs> and yet they're turning around but one of the players that has been able to do exactly this is, is gmd uh, comparison in that making that comparison from the week one where they play m80 to the last week when they look so much better against the glazers this is the player that you want to be and who was actually vans at the top of the game 100 percent, and that again brings that tenure and the experience of a player like gmd or the, the roster in itself under tsm right you are a team that's not winning pistol rounds yet you're still able to squeeze by through some victories and that's just understanding and your experience of how you could play the comeback in the game that losing pistol losing second round a lot of rounds snowball against you or you're already automatically like four or five rounds behind so now you have to be on point on what you're going to try to call as well what type of trap plays you're going to try to do as tsm is there anything that you could actually bring forward to but what we actually saw from tsm last week from gmd is more like yeah this guy could actually still rifle very well and he could still put a lot of multi-round kills and it doesn't really matter about really trying to do those type of set plays or trying to find some some nerdy type of anti-eco or an eco you can do against the anti-eco and still squeeze out these victories that's at least one of the positive things that i could that i could see about tsm in this roster for this season and another positive thing our boys Canadian GMD <laughs> Canadian we, talent baby we. <laughs> ye, ye, ye awesome uh, that's he's our French Canadian cool. getting he, he's, he's really he's cool, cool. Yeah. so we had to any, any right. French Canadian or Quebecer will know exactly what Lemon Kiwi and I are currently doing right now <laughs> Um, All right, guys. Just the, let's just to cap yeah. it out, though. The <laughs> fact that, yes, TSM lost to M80, and you were highlighting Dryad that week one was shaky for TSM. They still went 13 to 11, and okay, we don't talk about 13 6, but they played close to yeah. Lotus yeah. on yes. against M80, M80 the yeah. number one team of their group. So, TSM, I still think they're number two in my eyes. Ooh, hot take. Number two, yeah. that's that's kind that's of a hot, hot take, take, actually. That's a, that's a pretty that's hot not. take. We, we, we have that's to see, not. And, and the thing for me oxygen? is that... Well, number two in their group, oh, not okay, number two okay, in okay, the okay, challenge. Okay, okay, that's okay. Just different. That, that's yeah, kind of mild, fair. Mild, yeah, mild, yeah, yeah, mild, yeah, mild take. <laughs> okay, but the thing for me here Paprika is that take. TSM, and the way that I see TSM is that the first match, M80, honestly not expected to win and maybe being the best team and ntsm just having to kind of deal with that first tough match yeah then the second one was the glazers the glazers is kind of the the one of the worst performing teams in that group and i think in general that we have right now mm. so today is going to be the real test and now let's talk about winthrop because the real test is going to be the evolution that winthrop has been having this team that came from the collegiate team scene has even played at the riot arena has so much experience for for the most part of this this core and now they're starting to get these wins and challenges lemon i i think this can be a tough match for tsm because of them yeah winthrop coming off that win have shown the strength that could the collegiate ecosystem the talent that they can provide and it's a tough balance uh, of schedule when they have their collegiate matches they have real life and they're kind of having a carousel of coaches i was hearing from moves in that interview they got the bald buff but last <laughs> week we also highlighted that when the economy is in their favor they have an extremely high win rate but when both teams have full buys that's when winthrop seem to have uh, those type of struggles mm -hmm. But they looked really strong on Lotus, having about 15 first kills, seven of them to Infiltrator. It's really the duelists, I think, in this matchup that have had an incredible week two that need to bring it again in week three. Uh, and yeah, just to add quickly as well onto Winthrop University, too, is like their week one was still against Sad Esports. And Sad Esports is not a team that you could actually just brush off, right? And they were able to... It looked right. very, very shaky when they first started their first map in that series against Sad Esports. Like, oh, this is going to be very one-sided. But they got an OT win in week number one uh, in that second map. Still lost the series. But then were able to win against Tur Turtle Troop that brought a very interesting composition on Lotus as well. So now this shows a lot of grit for Winthrop University in general that, yes, you could play against some heavy competition in week one. But two, you're also able to think on your feet and adapt on the fly to win maps like Lotus when you're pulling out a deadline on the opposite side and still make it work against TTR. That is something as well that Winthrop talked about a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. The fact that sometimes they don't, and, and they literally said, Moob said, we don't care what the other team runs. We don't care if they're getting creative, if they're running something else. We're going to play our own thing. Yeah. And something that is going to depend so much on playing your own thing is going to be how those two duelists, the star players, mm -hmm. are going to be matching up today because they are 
honestly very different duelists but two duelists that were shining last week they were doing so good and as lemon said both of the teams getting that first win last week it's a it's a big difference maker for them one of the main things that i wanted to talk about here and you see at the very bottom is sim is that number one with operator kills this is a play style that adapts to sim and the team likes to bring to sim on the other side infiltrator vans when you see infiltrator you don't see a crazy number with the operator kills you yeah. actually only see three but with the rifle it's a different story and, and first off kind of crazy that he has three operator kills and he's currently ranked number six when there's like 12 teams currently in in challengers so it's like where the hell are the other offers right that's below him and, and how, how how is a play style i think that's the most important thing right it's not because you have a duelist in your team and sometimes you're going to play a jet you're just going to say automatically we have to bring out an op he's tried to bring it out actually on maps like ascent and on maps like Icebox, but didn't find too much value out of it just because I just see that the play style that Winthrop brings over to challengers favors a lot more rifling for the team. And it's not only on Infiltrator on race maps, but there's also maps, for example, again on Icebox, where you have Arena coming out of moves. So you're actually having a couple of players that can flex into a lot of like just fundamental trades of let's rifle through, let's scale as a group, and let's get our victories out of that. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot more value out of... Uh, infiltrator on maps like in uh, like lotus for example where he could pop off mm -hmm. or just raise maps yeah. in general too because he still has some pretty decent satchels that could create some good space for a team so that in itself to be like a selfless duel is to create that space and for the rest to really step up to the plate like moves for example uh, which is why you're seeing now if infiltrator is able to frag on top of that that's important important value to the whole team mm -hmm. And I think Sim talked about how much, like we actually interviewed him last week because that's what we do with winners. We talk to winners, we yeah. want to learn more yeah. about them. And Sim talked about how he's that early round, mid round caller. And yeah. when he does want to initiate on that duelist, he really has the backup of his team. As much as he he seems like the star of the show, his team are the ones that are creating those opportunities. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how the rest of TSM set him up today. Cause we talked of even last week, how Seven had that shaky week one performance mm. and really stepped up in week two to make duelists like sim uh come out on top and it's gonna really depend like you guys said on how those two duelists match up how different honestly they are and especially on what maps we jump to because that can really depend on what duelist is going to be able to shine the most today especially to start us off as you guys were saying for the setup one throw there's uh you're going to depend a lot more on what's standard right now what's meta what's playing around the rifle and just uh, jet dashing in yep. getting those opportunities and on the other side you do have a uh, the holding and having that map control bands that, that we expect but right away first impressions lotus breeze and bind a lotus that can really enable a race to be played can also allow some operator coming through so it's kind of a, a 50 50 at least when it comes to it and then a breeze and bind lemon to close it out yeah uh, this first map of Lotus, I think, is very comfortable for both teams. Um, we're seeing a lot more uh, success, I would say, from, from Winthrop, who are currently 2-0, hence why they, they picked this map. But TSM are 0-1 on Lotus, but I say that this is also their map pick, um, and they went extremely close against M80, who are number one in their, their group. So, Vans, I think both teams are comfortable here. 100%, and I think uh, it's the reason why you want to kind of keep Lotus quote unquote floating in the, in the beginning of the bands because you know it's going to be a map that Winthrop could actually just choose if you look at if you're looking at his overall it really matches to what you're catering towards the conversation here both lemon Q and dan dryad to say that the play style is sim on an off really helps them on maps like for example breeze or maps like for example icebox or ascent so I love that Winthrop is banning Icebox, so you try to eliminate Sim out of that role, but you still have to float one of the maps we're going to be weaker against, which is actually trying to, you know, head-to-head -head, um, seven versus Infiltrator on the op. And I, I, I find it weird, though, that TSM actually banned Ascent, because Ascent is actually not a map that I think favors really the playstyle of Winthrop overall with the Jet in their composition, because they play a Viper. So automatically, they're they're cutting themselves, themselves in terms of line of sights and value that you get out of an op. So overall, now you're looking at the three maps. <laughs> Breeze might go in favor of TSM for sure, but then the other two, like I said, it's really going to favor a lot of that pathing with the raised 
and a rifling that you'll see from Infiltrator, which is why, again, that's another reason why I think Winthrop is going to win this series against DSM today. I know GMD already called me out on it and already our, our friendship's <laughs> already over, but, you know, you got to stand to what you believe what with. You and I think that just I, I'm going to stand alone once again yeah. here and just thinking that Winthrop's going to win just because of the map pool. Uh, I gotta disagree. You know, I know you wanted to fight on the what? desk. I don't think my that dude is gonna disagree obviously... with me. Dude, my, you're casting alone. Baby you're casting fists alone. Are it's being over. thrown up. It's over. Oh wow. Okay, you were already almost not gonna be here because you got snow in April. Okay, but True. let me cook for a second. <laughs> um, TSM, yes, picked Breeze, and we haven't seen Winthrop at all on this map in Challengers yet. Mm. Um, but it's all gonna be up to a proto on TSM, who is just an incredible Sentinel, incredible Cipher, and really has to solo hold that down. But I really, I think Winthrop's initiators stood out to me last week. I think they could finally put pressure and really challenge someone like a proto if he does decide to hold site by himself mm -hmm. winthrop's initiators is is who will shine it and i guess flash uh literally so i don't <laughs> think it's gonna be an obvious win for tsm on that map and, and my apologies <laughs> i also meant to say sim on the op right not not uh, not seven at that point because yeah. i do remember seven at some point yeah. did play some op a bit too uh back in like the challenger scene of like 2021 with tsm also yeah, on top of that but it, it, different era i i had that that confusion as well at some point but yeah. yeah it is sim it is sim the one that's on top the one it's sim that has been playing the operator that has been playing start with an s man come on and <laughs> something about something about tsm though that we talked about last week when we got the chance to see them is that this is a team that when you look at uh, the individual players when you have somebody like a proto somebody yeah. like seven these are players that are used to playing that sentinel role maybe a little bit of controller as well and uh the the thing that i like the most about them though is that they can be very aggressive Aggressive. A proto, for example, as we've talked about, is one of the most aggressive sentinels that we have. There's only a couple more that we have here that are really taking those risks, going for the for the swing when they have to with the team, and, and that really shows a lot in the way that this team is trying to build up. Especially because when you look at Winthrop, and one of the the things that they said that they were working on is to not overheat, to not overextend, to, to be calm, to make sure that you get the first kill, you get the 5v4, you're racking up, you're waiting for the enemy to make that mistake yeah. and to go next. So there's a lot of things to take into account. I think the map the map pool looks pretty good for Winthrop at least to start them up, but I think it's going to depend on those individual mistakes to make sure that they don't make, don't make them as they made it on week one. But now it's time we jump into the agent select, see if there's anything new, anything that has changed on these two maps. Honestly, we don't think so. We think it's going to be about the same for this map of Lotus between Winthrop and TSM and Vans and Lemon. I'm going to leave you to it. We are being left to our own demise, and I'm stuck <laughs> with this guy. Oh, man, you guys are in for a treat. Try not to get us fired this week, huh, bud? Um, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best, but I no promises. <laughs> no promises. But, yeah, Lotus starting into this one. Uh, and to kick things off, definitely what we've been talking about at the desk, nothing really changes at that point here for Winthrop University in their map pick. So you'll still have a lot of value coming out of the fade and, and going with the flashes for a team like Winthrop University. Although, yes, the paranoia is going to be a big piece of that type of like single flash you're going to use but overall here infiltrator will be able to step up to the plate and play against that different type of style of tsm that has two flashes on their side when they try them and on top of that the paranoia which makes it three when they're going to play against each other so uh, i still think that this is uh, a matchup that favors uh winthrop in that first map but it will definitely be close at this point even when we we're hanging out around gmd stream yesterday when he was like streaming it's like hey chat do you guys think we have a chance to win against winthrop tomorrow and maybe he's just baiting his own chat. But at the same time, it shows how much value and how much respect TSM is giving into a collegiate team like Winthrop going into the series today. Well, I know, TSM are no strangers to that evolution of, of improvement because even in the interview with TSM last week, they said they only had two weeks before Challengers started as a full team to, to practice and to find their comfort zone. And now they got their first win. So it hey it's not a zero so you hit, <laughs> you can only go up from here right no more donuts to worry about and winthrop yeah you i mean i was questioning you on that pick on predictions but you said you believed in their potential yeah believe in their potential as they're actually even looking for a lot of that pressure on mid to start so pushing out towards b taking value of breaking that turret and also keeping T tsm on their toes where they can't take too much control of that mound anymore so you're also denying space of that orb and they continue to push forward on contact it almost got that pick on seven I'm glad Winthrop didn't keep pushing. It sounded like it kind of looked like TSM were 
positioning to have a pinch maneuver if Winthrop were still committing. With that smoke, it is going to push back Moobs, who is extremely low and does not want to be bait any longer. That smoke clears TSMC that the defense has left. But an interesting first pistol there from Winthrop. Almost a mistake there on Nasi, pushing that smoke a little bit too far out, which then allowed the dog and a couple of pop shots to come through as TSM's backing up. And Winthrop was kind of like looking to fight back, though. They're not afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe at the beginning of this game. Okay, there's a B site hit. TSM established, looking through Baby Door. They will send two there. GMD looking at the top. Spike planted into the corner. And you got the turret to protect Poise. That kind of eats some bullets, too. So it's kind of like a bodyguard. We got the Prowler making its way in. Paint shells around the corner. Winthrop with the retake. Oh, 3K for Sim to turn this round around. But Nazi is not done yet, but had to reload. So a proto saves the day. So unlucky that he ran out of bullets as he was flicking towards your proto. And yes, the person to anchor it in the end is, of course, Alex Proto Papas to win that victory for TSM. But you see the difference in styles of clashes, right? When you only have one flash available on the defensive side and that that's going to be your we're engaging on the flood retake. Look at what TSM had instant flash coming out of seven and it blinds three players running behind the paranoia, allowing for them to really get more kills in at the initial flash. But when it comes down to with the university, we talked about the rifling and the fundamentals being good on those trades. Nasi almost had that clutch. It could have been a very nice story to start things off for with their university. But now they have to go on an eco and they're just gamble stacking towards the seaside, which starts off well. This is usually very normal on the attack side to try to grab Ooh. that orb swing. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough, right? You can't flash behind it, too. So you're just giving your call away. It's just it's an easy backpedal for TSM to pivot back towards the A site. The timing, yeah, just a bit off Winthrop. We're almost ready to contest that orb, but just a second too late. So yeah. TSM will get away with that. Then they run through A, have already opened tree door. They got the dog running in, but Winthrop ready at the top. And there is that lurker of moves making their way through the offensive spawn. So TSM don't want to waste any time. They've got the plant. They've got the one-way smoke at the top. Checks the back corner. There's only one way the defense could be flooding in. And watching their flank is poised. But Infiltrator with the Sheriff finding an off angle. Sim already picks off one, evens things up. And that, oh, now it's the battle of the flankers as Poised under trouble. One See if they win that against moves. Yes, it is a win for Poised and a win for TSM in the round So two. tough. So tough for Winthrop to try to retake that top heaven side when Sims already pushed forward with a phantom. You have a phantom against a full eco on the other end. You could actually farm these kills. So the... They prioritize grabbing orb on C site for TSM. They prioritize Sim getting four uh, positions so he could actually get more kills. And they prioritize a showstopper in their gun round uh, should they lose this bonus round over here. So you can still get value out of yeah. having a strong rifle on yeah. Sim, being a hero rifle in this round in our bonus, and then add value in the next round to still keep the economy low against Winthrop. On Winthrop's end, though, they have a rifle round. They're going for the same pistol. This allows for you to open a door a lot more, a lot more easily, followed by the parry. Noya, so they could actually try to fight back towards mound but unfortunately this is actually great utility by tsm to really push gucci all the way back towards the c site where he actually can't help pinch towards mound so that allows here just a stalemate at the beginning but an orb one by sim who could actually already use a showstopper in round number three so both guiding lights used by seven one for the orb one to check out b because winthrop did extend out of b on that pistol round so tsm just trying to catch where they could be. Mm. And speaking of B, TSM are heading there again. Worked out for them in that first round. Just sending the boom bot, see who would swing off of that. Haven't baited Winthrop yet. You got the smoke that'll close off B and TSM spray and try to gather and make noise and gather attention. But TSM will rethink this B approach. And they're going to walk back a day. Yeah, into some bullets too. That hurt. And this is not the entry that TSM wanted, just dry swinging out of that. So B didn't work, A didn't work. What is plan C? It is to go to C site. And they just jump on in. Showstopper from Sim gets shut down. GMT, GMT swings, gets flashed, and moves comes out on top for Winthrop.
And that's beautiful from Winthrop. Uh, you just see how their round kind of unraveled. There was an attempt by TSM to throw a snake bite right at the entrance by that double stack to try to break the alarm bot. If there was anything set up by the defenders of Jerk on that A site, it missed. That allowed Winthrop University to actually push forward because TSM on their side, they don't really know if they could re alert towards the site or not. So Winthrop makes the call, hey, they're going to try to fake this out and maybe repivot later. They catch players off position. And then look at how that utility from Gucci was so good. A snake bite to actually vulnerable sim moves in and gets immediately stopped by moves with a spray from Waterfall. So that cancels out the bonus round. That cancels out the showstopper as well and gives a chance for Winthrop University to fight against a better economy. <laughs> My ult's ready. That paranoia from Nasi is so crazy. TSM lose two on entry. And Winthrop, they just know how to swing and catch TSM off guard multiple times. And yeah, for TSM to commit so much to Sand Mound to get those orbs, to get the showstopper online, for that to not convert to now TSM falling behind in economy and in this round. TSM will be losing momentum off of this, but 100%. five versus five versus three is not impossible. Yeah, they're they're definitely in a driver's seat right now for Winthrop University. Not only that, but those two kills allowed Infiltrator to get showstopper here. Oh, where'd that forehead come from? Moobs. It's not aware. Oh, an infiltrator. Oh, the showstopper. The satchel. He said, come at me, bro. But the wins, the kills. It just keeps spike coming the way of a. Winthrop. But the spike is down in a proto in a difficult position. Will Snake bite the left side in the smoke? Now the position is revealed. A proto has the play. Ring around the rosy against three players. But at least they're all in front of them. Doesn't even get initial damage into Jerk. At least I don't think so, but this will be a pinch maneuver and almost a double kill setup. But Nasi cleans it up. Good tech by Infiltrate. You saw it looked like he was trying to run away, but just to turn around on a 180 to satchel back with the showstopper. Despite him not getting a kill and getting stopped by a proto, it still forced the rest of the players on the attack to try to funnel around the site and try to clear it ACP. If not, at some point, there's going to be a rocket that just blows in the bit. So you saw and sensed that pressure that was coming up here for TSM to have to make a move. And unfortunately, they get there. caught off the there. remaining players that were inside for Winter University towards the A site. Now they tie the game and have a chance to take the lead now. The economy is broken for TSM. They're trying to stick as a group, at least try to get some plat money towards this B site. And now with the new changes on Lotus, you can't really try to go for an orb on B anymore as well. So nobody's really going to be able to have any ults on a post plant. Wow, a lot of action happened at A lobby. So it, it gave the sense that B site was open. TSM preferred this a couple of times now that they are set up the spike has been planted retaken sues from winthrop to at baby door two from the opposite side but tsm are not going to hold on the site they're all going to funnel through one door if the time is ready and tsm hold their own sticking together win or lose as a team the battle of the boom bots and tsm spray their way through they just need to deny the defuse and jerk has been injured but knows he's done more to gmd the spike will be tapped and GMD waits for his moment to swing and just at the last second oh comes God. out, gets Jerk to one. The spike is tapped again, but Jerk, he wins the mind games. I don't know if he has time though. This is It'll so close. close. Oh my god, at point 24 and gets that win against GMD. At 5 HP though for GMD, almost clutched it against two players of Winthrop University where again, we talk about that experience that comes through at the beginning of this series where you could be trailing behind by economy, by rounds, by pistol rounds that you lose, but you could still make it very winnable. Look at how good they were just to swing one off in each other on that flank that was coming through the retake that was attempted by Baby Door and allows here a, a at least almost something salvageable there for TSM. But this is an interesting point right now, though. We're on the defense for round number six, and already the first operator comes out this game, but it's actually the hands up infiltrator when we always mention that he prefers to rifle or at least gets more value out of rifling. And they're using a lot of that confidence to post him up towards the seaside mound. He'll get spotted by the dog potentially here. And that was with an op too, so don't know the ops around. And he connects. Fourth now of the season now for Infiltrator with that pick on poise. Wow, the denial. Even hearing the dog was coming, Infiltrator. Elise has shown his hand. 
and that the op is at C. So TSM have a lot of to work with. Uh, at least the Seekers oh, to reveal trying. who is on the site, but TSM can just rifle their way through. Now the Seekers will re reveal who is left. One and Gucci enemy. around the corner Spike holds their own a. against seven. And TSM have done enough work. Three versus one. Spike's about to be planted and Jerk is coming through the top site. So one versus three, he gets a pick and he gets locked down, but I doubt he's going to use it at this point. Now, with the position that TSM currently has around the tree, and they know how Jerk could be good here in these clutch situations, so they're not actually giving any room here for Jerk to get information. The first contact is really going to be Sim at the entrance of the A site. He's going to watch his full cross. Jerk. Just maybe going to decide to keep this one, especially if TSM are going to hide in tree like that. If there's two of them, like it'd be different to swing on one of them in that case. But hey, even gets a op out of it. Sure. Why not? I'd still lose it, though. Oh, oh unfortunate. Yeah. You don't get to keep that toy. And that's I feel that was a little bit like the first time that we're seeing maybe not that good of a communication on how Winthrop wanted to rotate around the players on uh, you know, rotating the op. Infiltrator gets a nice pick. The idea of him rotating towards, towards the A site, very well done. But then you saw Jerk move here towards the waterfall where nobody else was really watching like that B site rotate over the tree. So it allowed here for TSN to really lurk up on that staircase and for Sim to get that pick, which then automatically just cancels out the fact that you're trying to get an upper hand by rotating the op at the right spot. Maybe you needed some more satchels from Infiltrator after or something like that, but... He didn't make it there fast enough, so something yeah. that they're going to have to maybe tweak a little bit more as they're taking a defensive side. But now the opposite in the hands of Sim, using him to try to get first point now into C site where they have a lockdown ready as well to really just fully clear C. It might be one of those basic one hits, hit the site, play within the site because you have an operator or try to plant for mound and try to opt from there. All TSM, they're like, this is looking a little too free. OK, now this KJ utility is coming off. Oh boy, we're going to have to flush them out with the lockdown. So TSM are going to place that down and the immediate lockdown response from the defenders. It's an old man's land at the seaside. Yeah, and Gucci has no choice but to do ju a jump spot. So if a proto has the right timing, that opens the full A site right away. With 48 seconds left, you have an opportunity now for TSM to work the A site break the baby door, try to flood through then towards Hobbit and plant towards B. And you already see the position there. Opening this door, trying to fake towards the A site. Two players are still lurking towards B. You might finish at B here. Gucci wants to take one with them. And TSM, yeah, they made the fake. They made it look like once this lockdown was down that they would rush C. And TSM went into A, but didn't get that first pick that they wanted on to Gucci. Nice. So the plan happens at B. It's a big opening, but a Puna with the double. The Viper's pit, oh, it's so messy in here. Can you defend it? And for how long? TSM, it's blow for blow, toe for toe, and Gucci's the only one left and has to defuse. And there's an op looking at him and oh, the high low. Could not handle that, and TSM take the round. You were just hoping to get so much value out of a C's rocket there on the defensive retake. As soon as that pit came out, you were crossing your fingers that the tether actually took down the proto, but it was somebody else instead. So that allowed the pit to stay up for a proto play and block all that vision towards the heaven and waterfall and even get two kills on top of that. And that just sealed the deal there for TSM in that round number seven. So very well done in that case on how they worked around the map here for TSM. They voiced out the lockdown on the defensive side as well. And you're going to take that any day because you get a plant, you put out your pit, you get a round victory, and now you have economy uh, differential to your advantage against Winthrop, who only has one player watching the turret, got contact, and is now playing that solo, and that's Jerk, while the rest playing pistol round. Walk up contact, be main. GMD destroys Nasi. Ah, I gotta practice your lineups, kids. You wouldn't lose that if you were just an inch lower. All good, though, and all oh, the flash, and Infiltrator still wins that. Manages oh, to good. satchel out a seven. He may expect another person around that corner. Meanwhile, TSM have tried to make their way to the A site. Winthrop pushing through B. And oh. this will be an encounter for moves. But Sim was switching guns, so moves will get another pick. And TSM head to be the tried and true, but they're about to be surrounded. Nightfall happens and poised, opens up the site. 
TSM still needs a plan, but it's not uncomfortable. Not when the Winthrop forces are knocking at the door. And I mean, what door? It has been destroyed. And that's why Winthrop have not been able to make their way in. Wait, Jerk's still here. He has the backstab. That spike down. One enemy remaining. Oh, wait, two? Spike down now eight. it's a 1v1. Poise standing. versus Moobs. But Poise has a spike and knows generally where Moobs is around the mid cut. So the plant has time to get away with it. Poise on the post plant. Seeing if they can cross into tree will be an encounter. It looks away at the worst time. And Moobs will defuse and even things up. Put all your timings in the chat because that's basically what happened here. They're back and forth on both sides in that round number eight that we just witnessed there. Uh, just due to the fact that, just as you mentioned, Sim had his knife out that he pulled last second when he was trying to rotate over and gets popped by moves that upgrades into a weapon and also has nightfall. And as he pops the nightfall into the B site, it just got into the point where it almost touched. I think it was Sim that's pushing up towards heaven and still won that fight against that stinger towards the B heaven side because he wasn't decayed by the uh, nightfall that was thrown out by moves, which gave TSM an opportunity. Then he had the backstab and then the rest was history, right? So it really came down to who was looking what and where. But at the end of the day, it really was on how Winthrop University was able to punish really off the first pick or should I say the second pick that I got at the entrance of T-Spawn that really foiled those plans. So another big round coming out of, out of a lot of value of what Moobs brought to the table in that round, which forces now a timeout out of TSM. There's going to be some uh, discussions coming through right now to figure out how they can play around this map. And that's going to be called by uh, their latest coach here, Faded, uh, for TSM. And I, I got to say the discussion around this is is that they're opening or not allow or allowing Winthrop University and these off rounds to get a lot of value out of pushing out towards B site. You saw from the piss round, it's flash break the turret. Round number three, I think, was walked down contact on an eco. So now they have to understand that every time that Winthrop University is on an eco, there's a high chance they're going to walk down contact B. And maybe your extremity to control orbs is not going to be your most important priority uh, against these ecos. Now one away from Showstopper, Sim and friends. And use the guiding light just to get control of this orb. And Nasi is in position for a paranoia, but is this a swing? Is this a risk they want to take? The smoke is there, and she runs head first into Jerk, who picks up two. And yes, the showstopper came out, but it did not make the show that TSM were hoping for. Two versus two. Now the advantage back to Winthrop. We haven't even uh, set up on site yet, and the defense. It's just going oh, neck and neck against this offense. One versus one. A proto has no what idea where Gucci could be, but maybe. Oh, yeah, knows. the call has been made. A flank is coming, but the timing is it on his side. And Sean will too soon and chokes it. Gucci is just the better viper. With so many crispy shots that came out of a proto and the, for the first time he gets crosshair placement and could just wait patiently gets instantly 140 by gucci on the other end and gets the pick but he knew all along where that rotate was coming from i mean look at this flood that came through it's a nice little standard pinch that you have from the door and also from c site and usually if the kale joy is going to be moving out on the c site you know the viper is playing a so he had the perfect read of where his opponent was going to be coming from and how he could waste out that clock to maybe pivot back towards A at maybe like 30 seconds left. But unfortunately there, didn't win that fight. And this puts TSM uh, back into an eco where Winthrop, they understand this. So an outlaw is coming out, which will one shot every single one of the TSM members in this next round because it does 140 to the chest. And the strongest rifle that you have for GMD, it's a small shield and maybe you don't need anything. It's just a guardian to pop right back. So <laughs> goodbye outlaw. So much for hyping up that gun. <laughs> yeah. It's important to aim, folks, and the Guardian at range and click. still hurts. Yeah, don't forget the click part and the lineup and the aim. Yeah, you know, you guys get it. But it's so hard to play against Winthrop. You never know if they're going to early swing or play passive play out of sight. But TSM, they want to bring the party to them, but they're running into a defensive Viper's oh, pit. No, and being very stubborn on it, the TSM walked in and got hit by random Killjoy utility. So TSM can open the door and, and their own nades, apparently. To be with a judge up where the sun don't shine and TSM look lost.
Yeah, that that was a, a nice little ad- adaptation on the fly there from uh, from Gucci. Just to yes, you're going against an eco or a lower buy, uh, a thrifty that you have from TSM, but you want to guarantee those rounds, and you have alt economy to work with. You could cycle a lot more. There's going to be a potential other stalemate this time around with another lockdown, a lockdown from both Jerk and Poised, but they had that perfect pit there from Gucci to riddle really funnel everybody back plus the DK wall on the remaining members of TSM running through towards B. So very well done. Six rounds on defense is quite a great start here for Winthrop. Oh, what a flood by TSM and they get rubble control against infiltrating your bring out and take out one of the biggest threats on the defense and the second biggest threat of Nasi and TSM it cost them blood, sweat and tears to get to the A site and their back is turned to Winthrop, but it doesn't matter. TSM's impact was felt. What a goaded uh, TP half. from the shadows that GMD just did towards that staircase where you saw those two players pivot back. I mean, when you're looking at control towards rubble and how you're trying to play defense on a map like Lotus, there's often this three player push out towards rubble and try to control utility that way. So that means nobody's going to hear where the TP is coming from if it's behind enemy lines. They thought it was drop. And then GMD just walks down the staircase to get one kill and one through Here. a Viper wall to allow TSN to win that round. That was huge. Great, great way for even Sim to get an entry kill to keep the players at bay. And what a pick to start things off. Sim is starting to find value a la Zekin with the Satchel Vandal kills. Now TSM are being more aggressive off Rubble. They didn't send Infiltrator there this time, but they will be knocking at the A site. Summoning rotations out of Winthrop through the top side. TSM marching their way in. Last round of the half and big round previously for TSM to shut down that three round momentum, but Nightfall from moves and the kills already follow through. TSM are weakened and don't feel confident enough to get the spike down. They have no space to really own their entry and they are deciding to retreat. And you know from the nightfall, the tethers are leaving them behind, knowing that the pivot's going towards B. Pit comes out towards this B site, and a TP from Nasi is trying to get a flank into B main. But we're in great positions right now with, with both a Proto and Seven inside this B site. TSM putting it all on the line. How can they enter that second half? Will it be even or Winthrop up by two? And Winthrop pushing two from the top. They got Nasi from the right through Baby Door. This will be a confrontation for a Proto to win, but has the advantage, you would think. But a Proto is down, and so is the Viper's Pit. And it's all up to seven. They don't know where they are. Just have to deny the defuse, and it's not being stuck. What a good decision out of Winthrop to just be there for the trade. And Winthrop will take the last round of the half. Yeah, they knew how much time they had left there on that post plant to Switching play for Winthrop sides. University. So guaranteeing step number one, put it at halfway and then understanding where that last player is for TSM. Get off that spike, go for a double swing outside of that smoke, guarantee the trade and then just win off time with the defuse in the end. So very well done and thought out here for Winthrop in that pulse. But as I mentioned before here, it was great that he had a 6-4 scoreline. Now even having a 7-5 scoreline to end the half when they start off on defense is quite huge right now. But you're starting to see maybe Lotus is starting to maybe see a couple of more defensive rounds because you're min-maxing now and you're perfecting a little bit more the position that you could play here on the attack, knowing how you could flush out the defense and how you could control uh, the seaside orb and everything like that as well. So you're starting to see a little bit more aggression coming out from the defender side on this B control, which TSM's also doing this time around uh, in round number 13. To start things off, it's just a contact potentially with a dog, a flash, or just a, a lineup as you just see right now. And then if it comes down that you hear an orb being tapped on the C mount, you could still pinch in that side. And then what do you do for the rest? You play retake on the A site. So a proto is going to play for now a one and done in his position at tree and try to delay in that moment uh, as he has a snake bite to work work with uh, and then for the rest it allows for them to flood retake in the end uh, right now though for Winthrop they're just going back and forth trying to not make too much noise and you see from not making any noise at all it adds natural paranoia to TSM they're overthinking now they hit towards the A site and that leaves yeah. be open and an opportunity for Winthrop to plant you got ears from in infiltrator around baby door just to hear What's going on at the B site? How many people are stomping towards A? And this is great information as Winthrop are playing the mind games, playing as quiet as they can, and now ready 
to march in. And as they do, they got hit by paint shells by Sim. And it's TSM that take the initiative, that take the B-side before Winthrop even made their way in. Now it's a proto versus some paint shells. It's going to get some backup in this plan. But for now, Winthrop only trailing by one member. And Jerk can't get the equalizer. Infiltrator falls in a one versus two. And TSM, they just hold. Yeah, in the end, at least they get a plant now for Winthrop, right? So it's not really planet for uh, for it them to really play outside of my, a mound, sorry. So they have to push into different spots. And they're playing it solo. This is going to be very difficult to hold. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. The whole army is around the corner. Run! The birds, the dogs, the whole team is coming. And at least you can try and take one with you if you can. But TSM just surge in. Easy defuse for them. And... Great reactions, maybe a bit of overthinking out of TSM, but a great reaction overall to what Winthrop did. Yeah, in the end, it really came down to what they had to win in terms of fights, right? So uh, before becoming overthinking, it was getting the nine on a plant on B site. You had to have Infiltrator win that fight at the staircase so that the rest could pivot from the whole A site, from B site, sorry, onto A because Hobbit door was never broken. With him losing that pistol, you have no choice but to just try to gamble and plant towards that C site at a disadvantage. A C is actually caught all four players towards the waterfall where any type of right clicks would have given them a chance, but then it was uh, too little, uh, too late. And it was too much in terms of uh, bodies for TSM for the last two members to win for Winthrop. So they tried to adapt on the fly every single time and couldn't Ooh. find value off those surprises. I love the shorty buy by Infiltrator. They're just gonna satchel into B and see what they can get, but they get hit by a paranoia from the door. And TSM just dismantled them. Not that Winthrop had a lot to work with, but man. Oh, okay, there, there's a shorty. There's a shorty doing some work here. Infiltrator decides to switch up the gun too. In a one versus three though, Winthrop uh, will fall in that case. Yep and still trying to chase him down. Sim, once again, same scenario as that first half. They win pistol, second round, he's chasing down these kills, and he's one away from a showstopper. If anything, though, big check mark for TSM versus what happened to them last week. They're finally winning pistol rounds here. They won both of these pistol rounds so far, which then allows for them to have a little bit more of a cushion. But all that's been de de denied here with how Winthrop was so good on the defensive half that despite them converting that pistol round, it's only a tie game seven to seven. Their bonus round is still quite weak here as they have really uh, only specters and a sheriff and a ghost really uh, against what Winthrop currently has on the attack. Sim is going to fight for Sand Mound for that orb to get the showstopper. Not that the showstoppers have been insane quite yet. Both teams have been good at shutting those down. Meanwhile, Winthrop behind the Prowler will explore A to await them from TSM's side. Now getting hit by all kinds of utility and now the smoke cutting them off. This will be a relatively easy plant from Winthrop towards the tree. And TSM still have to reestablish, but I really want to see where a GMD and Sim are coming from through the small door and Winthrop. They really have to rely on someone like Jerk to cut that off. Oh. Satcheling in though is Sim, kind of messed it up, is on top and actually right above somebody else. Goes one for oh. one, Last still gets a showstopper kill. TSM though flooding in and winning every engagement as it's up to Infiltrator in a one versus four. And he is discovered and he is dealt with. So remember when you talked about uh, Winthrop University overheating from time to time? That was one of them. A great kill that came out of Nasi. Yes, Sim got a kill off the showstopper, but it was a free kill. A freebie to trade that off, and then he TPs into sight out in the open with two guys in heaven just waiting after him. Where he's actually playing controller. He should have known maybe his smoke was gone by then, and he'd be out in the open TPing through there. But nonetheless, the, the game plan was already there for TSM. The pressure on that C-mount. They're okay to give up that A site because once you realize after the minute mark that nobody's adding, adding pressure on that C site, you get a free orb, it gets the showstopper ready for Sim, and it engages and allows TSM to play that retake oh, back in the A site. So very well done on that side. Just miscommunication on Winthrop on the pulse plan. But that, this, this eye is huge right now. Oh, oh, that's just the worst time. All right, support of fire. I'm satcheling. And then they just die. So it's just, <laughs> we're not expecting, uh, we're not aware of TSM's game when it comes to sand. This is their little pile. That is their orb.
And that's why one ways are so good here for playing that on that C site. GMD could just play the off angle and now they're just farming against the Thrifty of Winthrop University, right? I'm okay with this. GMD is going to have the From the Shadows ready into a round. He's brought a lot of value into that in that first half with that nice TP that he had on the staircase. It allows for him to really um, probably get a TP behind enemy lines once again or get information when TSM is going to try to retake in the site too. And now we're calling it a, a timeout for Winthrop, and I like it because they haven't really figured out what they kind of really wanted to do when it comes down to these pulse plant situations. And we're, we're overcooking and maybe overcoming in <laughs> terms of trying to get good pulse plant positions in the end to try to delay um, any type of pushes coming through from uh, from TSM. And that round, for example, where where we talk about Sim having that showstopper to retake that A site, you saw that a lot of those players for Winthrop University, despite them having an open A site in a free plant, they didn't want to adapt into that showstopper retake. They still played turtled up towards rubble, back towards tree, uh, and really within the site, which punishes them a lot in in these type of ultimate retakes. So I think now you have to understand a little bit more. We have to we maybe have to take advantage of that space that's given to us. We continue with our fundamentals to be able to 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 be good in our trades and trust infiltrator and moves to to really fight in aggressive enemy lines in these pulse plants. I, I'd be panicking. I, I like this timeout too if I would throw up because they haven't won a round in the second half yet. And that's where last week we're applauding their cohesion. They really played better off of their initiators when they initially struggled off of that in week one. But now Winthrop may be, may be suffering from the overcooking and the and the chicken being dry. Nobody loves dry chicken. But Winthrop, like rubble, and they already caught Sim jumping back and maybe wanted to punish that, but no, Sim gets out alive, able to conserve that op and gets an initial shot in, but loses half the health. And that's where holding utility is being used to chase down Sim. It's just a cat and mouse game where Winthrop make their way to A. TSM are getting smoked off. This will be a plan for Winthrop. Infiltrator playing ahead and a proto is sneaking on by, but a flash in the hands of Seven to open up the site as a proto goes down the stairs, goes one for one. Seven can't win against Infiltrator, wasn't expecting him that close, but poised, silent, yet deadly against Jerk as TSM in a three versus three, but Infiltrator half held moves by his side and the op gets shut down there by Sim. And Winthrop keep their eyes at the top, but they feel like they've dealt with enough defensive members. So maybe the flank is what they have to pay attention to. I'm gonna try to save the op. At this point, it's pretty much GG or two versus three. There's no time left on the clock. GMD could just wait for the spike to go out, get some exit kills, and maybe run towards the op once the radius blows up. There's the three sure. kills. And he's too far to get the op. So at least, at least there is that. There's a round for Winthrop. There's no ops in the hands of Sim. But you saw that pivot from that timeout, right? Look how forward they went off the pulse plant. Infiltrator playing inside that smoke, leveraging moves as Nightfall to actually get tethers in this kill win against Seven. Uh, and then at the same time, pushing out towards drop and getting that pick too. So very well done. The only bad thing though, is that they lost all their guns on the pulse plant despite yeah. the round. So their economy is in a shambles once again, but thankfully, they have a showstopper to work with, and it seems to be leaning towards this B site where it's perfectly read by Poise with all of his util. Early Viper Spit to lock down C site. Now Winthrop just going to use Prowler into B. A lot of KJ utility that may slow them down in that case. You got a lot of noise from, what was that, an Odin from GMD at A just to spray through the walls of tree. So Winthrop thinking we could take on an Odin. Yeah. It's not too bad. <laughs> at least going to go back to their default setup. I I'm still finding this very interesting, though, because TSM went for a very early pit towards that C site, which kind of makes it a little bit easier for Winthrop to, to, to say, let's challenge this B or A site with a showstopper. Yet, they still want to go back inside the pit. They're pinging a lot. So I think they're going to leverage the second Prowler to maybe Showstopper behind that. And there it is. Oh my god, they're still going into this pit. There's two other sites. The Showstopper whips. And Infiltrator takes Wait. an L. But TSM 
They have metaphorically closed the doors on this site, but there's still Not one. Yet. Nasi, the rats. No one knows they're there. And they see two of them that have their backs seconds. turned. And Sim almost swung into a double kill, but Nasi at least gets one for their trouble, sneaking their way in. This will allow Winthrop to get a plant. His TSM trying to put damage at off angles, but they're all so low. Exactly. This is such a winnable condition, winnable situation for Winthrop. And they understand the low HP, and it's not planted for them at, at mounts. So they're fighting in sight. Ooh, oh, they're all low, but stronger together. No, Sim didn't know this position out of Nasi, who gets three that round to equalize things to get Winthrop back into the picture. So Infiltrator got his redemption by losing that pistol on 1v1 on that staircase that we mentioned before that was super important. He misses a showstopper kill here but still made it behind enemy lines and dropped a proto, which means the pit was gone. And that allows one sneak to come through because of a seize. It, it blocks a little bit of that um, that vision and should I say the audio cues, which allowed one to just flank behind enemy lines on that C site and almost get a double. But all that is one kill, space gain, and keeping them low HP because he got the sky down. So that's a beautiful round in the end for Winthrop. Off infiltrators kill with a stinger on a lower buy that Winthrop had. This is an opportunity now to really bring it back in the game, but they're not out of the pit yet because the economy is still very good here for TSM. While for, ooh, uh, I was going to say Wu-Tang, Winthrop, a little less. <laughs> well, TSM uh, had three stacks, C, pushed C ooh. mound, going shot for shot. Spike down. And now two spawn. versus two, but the spike recovered by Winthrop, knowing that they're stuck in spawn. TSM now can give them a little space. Toys will establish themselves on the B site as a proto now has to take back over the C site duties and Winthrop have a lot of options including using from the shadows to get behind enemy lines if they want to especially when they're at a moment that they're weak they are going to enter Poise going to make the call doesn't want to take engagement this is let me out of here and the paint shells oh explode the room but Poise wins eight. at least one and Nasi versus a proto will be what is left with 30 seconds left that was such a nice left. attempt there by Poise to break the door and pretend that he's escaping and just holds a tight corner. At least wins his one. Makes it very doable for a proto to actually get redemption on a clutch. Oh, the clutch couldn't happen. TSM will get the defuse and at least not getting Winthrop, uh, letting them get away with too much because TSM were, were dominating the second half, four rounds in a row. Winthrop took a timeout, got themselves out of their own heads and started that comeback. But we knew this was going to be the most exciting match of the day. A hundred percent. And at the same time, too, uh, how how much value and, and praise we gave to GMD on his change into we like this spray to get the wall bang after was huge and gets a second wall bang kill uh, in the round. So we talk about GMD. It's not always about these trap plays that they're they're trying to do here for TSM. It's just one person that can get multi kills and really turn around in their favor. And GMD yeah. continues that same type of play style and reign that he had from week number two to be at the top right now in the server in uh, in week number three here uh, against Winthrop university and now we talked about how the economy was still very low for Winthrop versus what TSM had we're back into a thrifty now for Winthrop but this is actually quite good they have a frenzy and a stinger to work inside a viper's pit so the winning con is trying to keep Gucci and jerk alive here so they could they could delay a pulse plant inside a pit so they're choosing the a site because it's a little bit easier to get that pit around and, and the nano swarm supply inside that site oh, seven use the dog but now caught themselves in an awkward position manages to get around the corner before infiltrator satcheled in and killed them now seven has backup of their team they're all funneling through the top of the site though it all comes down to the picks tsm re-enter with two and with throb try to play into this pit it's an absolute mess and it's a team ace in favor of tsm and that's again going into those uh, situations where Winning conditions is not only to take site control, but win site control. So they 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 set their foot in, they break out all of the nano swarm that comes out here on this A site. 
but then they're not really winning their fights. They haven't really cleared out towards drop. That allows here for TSM to get one or two kills out towards tree. Yet a pit still comes out because you're like, oh, I have control of stairs. Let me just keep controlling stairs for us. But meanwhile, he's losing all of his teammates on the other side. And this could have been a super important pit for them to use in this round. Now they finally have money and that they're trailing behind by two. So you don't have, I don't think their, their economy, um, uh, expenses are actually quite high here for Winthrop University. Their their win cons for ults is not that great. They might have to try to start fighting for overtime in these situations if they're not close to these ults, where, for example, Jerk or Infiltrator is probably going to be the next ones on the board that really is going to give Winthrop University a chance under these ults, which is why I totally understand that they're pulling out their last time out here of this first map so that they could try to get something out of this. How can they fight against TSM? Where are they finding the most value? How can they punish somebody that's maybe not too high on a scoreboard because he's too bu busy healing everybody? So where is Seven playing? How can we punish him? You know, so uh, that's probably what's being discussed at the same time too on, on how they could work the map for Winthrop University. And most most importantly, how they could win these pulse plans because look at them, there's there's what at least four plans that happen. Three of them went to the defuse of TSM. So their pulse plan holds aren't the best. And you would think that they would feel their best uh, when it comes to Winthrop. This is their map pick. And this is... They're only down by two yeah. rounds. But TSM are just that much closer I to going... Uh, to taking this, to going to map two, where Breeze seems favored towards TSM. But an early dog out of seven who's been sort of so solo holding a rubble, but playing as far back. Yeah. TSM do not want to play that far forward in a lobby with how much utility Winthrop like to pull. But they're just, Winthrop are taking their time with this. Look how long TSM's holding this mount and they've been pinging out towards that side. There was a fake, uh, I thought it was a fake TP that came through Benassi, but something gave him a tell that maybe somebody crossed over. So they're keeping so many resources towards the B and C site. Despite a dog spotting one player, they haven't rotated anybody yet. So they can pinch in this B site now uh, against Poised. Yeah, the paranoia from the front, the entry from the sides, and somehow Winthrop don't kill or do damage, and Infiltrator gets a little desperate, runs into the gun of Sim, and then, well, Sim just jumps in with Showstopper and ints a little bit, but now it's the lockdown from Poise that will flush out Winthrop. A nice lineup by seven Seekers to find the remnants of Winthrop as Jerk. He's just trying to conserve his own life at this point. A one versus three. It's at least he's got Spike. <laughs> yeah, but GMD just threw the one way. He heard the footsteps of Seekers. It confirms that he's going to 1v1 oh. against them. Gets the advantage from the one way. Now TSM's at map point. So beautifully done in the end. Again, a, a slight little overheat that came Max through Poise. towards Infiltrator because he was just trying to find a, uh, the, the opportunity to punish Poise and destroy the lockdown so the Winthrop, Winthrop University could actually get in the site. But he has no buddy system behind him. He gets backstabbed there by Sim. Thankfully, they canceled out the showstopper, but they couldn't cancel out the lockdown. And that just made everything just impossible for Winthrop. Even even Moobs got detained at that point. So now you're you're back in a lower buy. But as I mentioned before, they have at least ults to work with and they're they're going for it. You know, it's potentially just yeah. a nightfall, play a pulse plan with an, uh, a lockdown. And I love this position from the Omen from GMD, though. Big kill. What? GMD just like that and the satchel's not working out and I thought this was going to be a withdraw crown. They had three ults. Oh my God. They were one away from Showstopper and they just trip over their laces. Gucci has to pick up someone else's wait. judge. Wait a minute. Oh my God. Okay, we, we're done waiting. Win. That is a TSM <laughs> win at the end in commanding oh, fashion, I gotta say, at the end. I, I just, unfortunately, I was a little bit tilted by us just swinging one by one after. The first kill, when he actually took down, I think that was Nasi that TP'd across. So when GMD gets that pick, there had to be some communication to say, hey, he's on top boxes and never really TP'd away. And even if he did, there was no utility to try to clear that out. So again, in, in, in these moments, it just shows a little bit now for Winthrop University when it's under heavy attack and just a, a lot of uh, high intense moments that's going to bring a lot of comms. I feel a lot of that gets snuffed and, and then they, they don't have clear communications again to try to get those winning conditions. So unfortunate there that uh, that screws up my prediction, but uh, <laughs> but at least they put up a fight. It's not over yet, though. Yes, Winthrop <laughs> lose their map pick, but we're going to try and fuel vans with as much copium as possible because we got maybe one more to go. And it's TSM's pick. We'll see you after this for Breeze.
tell me what the call out is and then tell me if you had to rename it what you would rename it rename it oh bro this is like impossible to rename mm, kitchen what would you rename this i don't know this is a tough one this call out's kitchen for sure a lot of people have been calling this kitchen ever since the beginning of the game so i'm glad this one stuck around kitchen pretty much the best call kitchen i call it milk same playing field but a little different a little switch up if you will i mean i call it kitchen call this kitchen you could call it lab lab is shorter than kitchen yeah i mean this is called kitchen and it's pretty infamous because you no know, it's literally a kitchen oh yeah it's kitchen i think we're banning this map too so my team calls this kitchen i could call this Coffee. Obviously, this is kitchen. There's a lot of food there, so maybe I just rename it to like leftovers. Maybe I feel like leftovers would go hard. Oh, this is kitchen. What if you just called it diet milk? I mean, that's kitchen, and it will forever be kitchen. Everybody just calls it like tree. I'm not gonna be the creative one on this one. This one's just too simple. All right, this is uh, this call out is tree. This is tree. I don't know, man. I feel like this, this one's like really simple. It's like hard to use anything else. Probably gonna have to keep it tree just because like there's only one thing in this room. Yeah, okay, this is tree. This is tree. Team calls this tree. There's hearts on the ground next to the door, so I could call it heart. This is tree. Or you can call it Gaia's Vengeance Vandal because it's the same tree as the one you use on there. I'll be creative. Let's call this maple because I'm from Canada and it's a big, big maple tree. Well, I mean, we call it tree, but if I had to rename it, I'd say hell because I hate that room. What could you rename this? Call it Autumn. Everyone calls this tree. Personally, I always like to call this something else. Go like jungle. Oh, all right, tree. Hmm. You got that path on the ground. Maybe you could go cobblestone or something. I would say tiles is probably the most common. I think everyone calls this tiles in an A at least. Not sure what else people would call that to be honest. Tiles. Call it like garden. We've been calling this tiles. Maybe we could call it plant. It's pretty obvious why it's called tiles because you know all the tiles and stuff. But if I was to change this call out, maybe plants. Oh yeah, this is tiles. Maybe we can call this whole area squid by because there's a squid on the wall. Tiles or maybe fl flower pot. So we have tiles here. You can name it like second mid maybe because there's like the big mid on the left. I actually don't like this call for tiles, bro. I don't really call this like garden. Like, look at this. Like, this look, kind of looks like a garden. You definitely just change this to, you know, like plants is a good one. Jungle, something like that. I didn't even realize like until now. Garden, maybe? Garden would make sense. I just can't think of a better word that describes it than tiles.
face. 